Where's my reading glasses? <laughs> Fina. I'm talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. Yes, I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God, I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain Ooh, with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. <laughs> You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome into the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show brought to you by Q42 on the button rumblings there it is vidcast multicast and podcast network and i'm going to say this after i introduce myself i'm here with john my name is joe miller and i am the host of the show the off tackle show the buffalo bills could have used some of that kyle williams kyle williams energy yesterday on that defensive line in my opinion i don't uh man i'm hurting john <laughs> as you're pouring a slow beer i'm hurting bro uh, I'm, I, uh, you know what this isn't a beer this time it's just it's like a gin thing called the long drink to go with the long night and the long day that we all had yeah yeah so yeah my uh i don't know what'd you say i'm i yeah what I said uh, the buffalo bills the defense could have used some of kyle williams energy kyle williams just had a set had a different motor had a different gear about him. There was just a, I remember, you know, and, and this was completely unscripted, us talking about Kyle Williams. I remember when he was drafted, John McCargo was drafted either in the first round late or in the second round. He was supposed to be the, like, the big stud defensive tackle, heir apparent guy. Kyle Williams was taken in the fifth, just kind of a, nah, some dude we took a flyer on. And Kyle Williams just, from the time that he got here, just played at a different le- level. He just played like every play was his last play ever. Um, and I, think All right, I want to address that because <laughs> just, just because it didn't turn out with, you know, free defensive tackles and Patrick Mahomes on the ground. I mean, they yeah. all play, especially in that game with their greatest effort. Just sometimes it just isn't enough. I mean, yeah, yeah. and that, that I, you know, and I've been saying this for a while now for anybody who's dared to join us on this podcast is you know, that we don't have enough, like, sudden special things, you know, and mm-hmm. enough break-free moments. Uh, we could have used a couple of those uh, last night. On defense, uh, look, you know, I mean, we'll go through it all, right? But the first thing I want to say is uh, for my man at Q42. Yeah. Um, like all of us in Grills Mafia, Q42 is having a tough time right now. They don't want to mention the names of their sauces, so instead of an ad, Q42 is giving a humble and strong shout-out to everybody Mm. who grilled, smoked, and cooked this weekend, and I'll say all previous weekends, and to everyone who just showed up to eat and drink, too. It was a championship-caliber tailgate season and day yesterday and watch party all over western New York and the country because nobody circles the wagons, the grills, the smokers, or coolers full of beer like the fans of the Buffalo Bills. And you know what, Iman, that was beautifully put. He Super writes good. copy, and it's brilliant. Uh, he's twice as good as me when he's asleep. <laughs> That's funny. So you were going to talk about uh, – you were going to expound upon just my – my. You, it's it's hard. Daryl Talley was that guy for you. You say that. But you guys had that engine, especially on defense. You had that engine. You had that guy that no matter what the stakes were – no matter what the score was, he was not going to quit. He was just not going to quit. And I'm not saying that they quit. They definitely didn't quit. It just. Well, I, I also think like we, we came with four guys all night, right? I mean, we didn't, yeah. we didn't, we didn't have a lot of games didn't have a lot of twists. I mean, you know, I was thinking about it today for the 9 millionth time, like everybody right, out there. Right, right. And I, <clears throat> Patrick Mahomes is covered in grease. Josh <laughs> Allen is covered in muscle, right? For sure, for sure. Two, uh, they're the, I think that in the top three, if not 
two best quarterbacks in this league. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be gee damned how we didn't corral him on a couple of those instances. He's slickered and snot on a doorknob, and I cannot stand it. And our guys battled. We just needed a big play here or there. And we didn't get it. We didn't get it out of the defense. We had a couple of really poor uh, play calls on, I think, two of them in the second quarter and one of them in the third quarter. I was just aghast. Um, some of the yeah. play selection just was not not for me, as I like to say. Before we get um, into before we get into just the normal I'm rundown, here. I'm rolling here, Joe. I'm sorry. You're good. The, the nor- no, you're good. You're great. I love it. Uh, I would almost. I fe- I'm in my feelings today, and for me, that's not great, and it's not normal. So, as an INTJ, Myers Briggs Enneagram Eight, I'm very disconnected from my feelings. I compartmentalize real <laughs> you just well. Bring up the Myers Briggs. I did, and indeed, <laughs> uh, so for me to be in my feelings all day long, like even Beth was like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "No." I don't think I am. And, and it, it primarily comes from standing in that stadium with my daughter next to me, mm. having making just some incredible memories with my child and going through a game where, I'll be honest with you, I didn't have an expectation of winning. I didn't come into that game like, we got this. Like, we're going to Oh, no, win. no, I, I like, agree. So, so. And to, to tell to me go, about it, though. How was the atmosphere? How are the Chiefs fans? Were they good I will. Give, 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 let, I'll get there. Like, um, I, so, and then and Josh Allen walking off that field a winner twice. Right. So, so the, the beautiful thing, and I'm going to get ahead of myself when they got the ball back at seven minutes, six and a half minutes, whatever it was in the fourth quarter, all they needed was one touchdown. The chiefs just kicked a field goal. All they needed was one touchdown to win the football game. I was like, they're about to, they're about to just drag this thing out to the end, score a touchdown and walk off the field winners. Literally. That's what I thought was going to happen. And in a roundabout way, it did. That's literally what happened. Anyways, the feelings part. So for me, I just feel like I feel like my soul was snatched from me. So yeah. it's just, and and I felt this way during the Music City Miracle. And this morning, when we were sitting at the airport, I tweeted about it. That's when it hit me that I was like, I felt this feeling before. What is it? And it literally was wide right. I remember Scott Norwood. I remember sitting on my best friend's couch. He was a Giants fan. We were in Florida when I was in high school. Scott Norwood's walking on a field. I'm like, this game's over. We just won this. Foot- we're Super Bowl champions. Like. And then it it just doesn't happen. Like again, now this is different, but it just got snatched. It just yeah, it's tough. But the day overall, to get back to that point, do you want to respond to that before I talk about my day? Yeah, I, I you know I'm I couldn't <clears throat> I couldn't help myself. The first touchdown, I said, "Yeah, there's two minutes on the clock. It, it's not over, right?" Sure. I mean, I like forget it. We got we have to score again in my mind, <laughs> and um, so I sat still on the couch. Well, my family was going crazy and friend had a buddy over and then uh, they scored right within a minute, obviously. And then I thought, OK, I, I have confidence we can da- go down and score again. And when we scored, when Josh threw that ball to Gabe Davis with 13 seconds on the clock, I leaped out yeah. of my seat. Nice, nice. I had arugula and beets and pecans coming out of my nose. I ten, was, ten, John's leaping. <laughs> ten, John's leaping. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm with you, man. I mean, it was, I, I, I couldn't, and you know, here's the deal. When it went to overtime and they won the coin toss, you know what I did? What? I went to the kitchen and started washing the pots and pans. Yep. So I, uh, yeah, so I'll get to the game day experience. This is where I, so I'm, I'm just going to expound upon that a little more. I'll hit that super chat and then I'll start from the the, the day. Yeah, do that. The, the, week, the weekend. So the last. So, the, so I'm standing next to this Chiefs fan next to me was awesome. He was a good dude. Like M- McKenna even said, he reminds me of you. Just kind of the way that he was processing the game and kind of talking to me and talking to people around him. So we're going back and forth, like having conversation about good plays, bad plays, good things going on. And, oh, that was a penalty. That wasn't a penalty. Why didn't they call that? Why did they call that? So it gets down to Josh Allen scoring. And I said out loud, we left way too much time. Minute 54. Way too much time on the clock. And he's like, oh, absolutely. And I was like, I'm nervous right now. He goes, well, we'll see. You know, the the the, the Chiefs haven't been great this year in this situation. I've seen him run around and throw the game away. Sure enough, they go down the field and score. And he looks at me with 102 left. He goes, now I'm nervous. <laughs> and i was like you should be like literally i was like i responded with you should be this is where the bills do the same thing uh, and then the Bills score 13 seconds left and people are leaving so so i like to sit in the upper deck not like row 39 i like to sit row one two three of the upper deck preferably row one because i can see the whole field 
I can say, I don't like being in the lower bowl. I find myself in the lower bowl looking at the screens a lot. And for me, if I'm looking at the screen, I'd rather be home on the couch. So put me up high. So get me up over top of everything. And we were. Um, but it, like with 13 seconds left, the Bills just scored. That stadium was deflated and people were leaving, not not streaming out of the stadium, but people were leaving the stadium. And I said to the dude, I was like, people are leaving. There's 13 seconds left. Like, had they not been yeah, around? Like, <laughs> like five minutes. Like right. with these two guys, 13 seconds is, <laughs> right. is damn long enough. Right. And sure enough, you know, this is where this is where the this is where the, the questions that I have come from. And it's not so much effort questions as much as it's and we'll talk about it. Scheme, coaching questions and things like that. We don't have to talk about it now. But and then sure enough, that happened. And then that happened. And, you know, McKenna's standing next to me crying. And it's like, baby, that was a great game. I was like, hey, the Bills won. That's the greatest game I've ever watched. But, honey, we got we came out here. And no, we got that's to the it. second greatest game you've ever seen. <laughs> we still know what the first one is because well, that will never be number one, even though it was <laughs> legend. <laughs> so, um, ah, hey, we never did discuss what's our profanity policy on this show. Uh, well, there's podcasts that are explicit. They have to have an explicit marker on Buffalo we rumblings. We, uh, we can, but if you want to swear, you can just be careful. <laughs> be careful. It's not like I'm going to, I'm going to go to the sink for, I'm going to hit, hit Brooks super chat real quick. By the way, yeah. everybody, we are live. We are super chat ready and live. If you're watching us live yeah. currently, jump we'd love to hear from you because I can't keep a, a thought process, Brooke. And you're convinced that the sports gods hate us? This just hurts, really hurts. I'm here to tell you, Brooke, there are no sports gods, okay? <laughs> um, there just aren't. Uh, it's, but it, it makes us feel better sometimes. Yeah. Buffalo against the world. Uh, I, I have my feelings about it. Um, I do want to see. I do want to say that Brooke did her 11th. She did her 111th. She tweeted me yesterday and said, I, I didn't know watch. What, I don't know. What the, what does that mean? What is 111? I hear this expression, and then I hear that stand John, thing. John, how many players are on a football team at any given time on the field? 11th. There's 11, 11 team there's players. 11, there's 11 guys. So everybody's it's the, it's the Bill Belichick. Everybody does their job. You do your 111th. We'll come out on top. So as uh, fans, we do our 111th. So she, she tweeted. Cool lingo. <laughs> she tweeted me yesterday and said, I didn't watch the game. So I don't know what happened. I was pacing it. I was super, and I was like, Brooke, you should have watched the football as much as we make, not make fun of her, but we have fun at her expense here about not watching the game because they've been winning without her watching. She should have watched it. So Brooke, thank you for not watching, but I, I prefer you would maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you don't yeah, prefer. If you had watched, watch we would have won Brooke. <laughs> right. It's all on you. My for, other every, for the person that asked me if I wore the same clothes, all the way down to the socks and chonies for the past five <laughs> games. They stood up on their own. My threw them away. My the turn my the turn's table. Uh but uh it's what's what's amazing, John, is how much of a not a fan, you've been a fan of football, how much of a fanatic for the Bills you have become. Like you I have been you. you have been sucked in big I time. Hate you. I hate <laughs> all of you Bills mar mafiosolos. <laughs> These go down really smooth. <laughs> There was a time when John would watch a football and just anal analytically watch it. Now he's like emotionally invested in Buffalo Bills football, which is crazy. So, all right. So you want to get to my day? Today or yesterday? No, yesterday. My 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 weekend with my daughter. So, yeah, I think that I think that is probably uh, more fulfilling than us talking about the. Um, the final 13 seconds. But. Well, I'll get through it as quick as what well, we're going to talk about: the good, the bad, the ugly. We're going to talk about all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So. The Bills win the the, the 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 playoff game against the New England Patriots, and immediately, as every Bills Mafia member does, it's like, oh, can I make it to that game? And sure enough, it was no. And then I've got a couple friends that are texting me, going, "I just got tickets. You coming with me?" And I'm like, "Probably not. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a long drive. I don't, you know, I don't have six hundred dollars for a ticket type stuff." Um, and then I get a, a text from a, a player that's a friend, and he's like, "I got two tickets. Do you want to go?" And I'm like, "Yeah. Uh, let me find out." Like, don't give them away to anybody else. Um, and I've talked about this player before. I don't want to name drop. So those of you that are familiar with my shows, you've heard me talk about my connection to a couple of the guys. Um, sure enough, it works out. I've got, I've got enough points for one flight. I've got hotel points for free, for, for free hotel rooms. So all I got to pay for is McKenna's flight. So I talked to Beth. I'm like, hey, can I take McKenna to this football game? I just got two free tickets. And she's like, mm -hmm. absolutely. That'd be amazing. Girl, you know, yeah. daddy-daughter daddy date. Go do it. Make memories. 
So we work it out. So we, we get, uh, I think it was Friday. We're flying out Friday. And then I get a message, another message from the same player. I've got, like he says, I think I can get my hand on a set of field passes. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. Mm. And sure enough, he gets me. So he, so like we're working Stop through. Stop it. it. Yeah, You're it on Saturday. the field for warm ups. It was Saturday, not Friday, but Saturday. Yes. So, so we're talking and then Sunday morning, it's like, Hey, where are you going to be? How do I get these? He's like, you're going to have to come to the hotel uh, and pick them up because we have a walkthrough, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, just let me know when and where. So we selected the time we're in the Uber on the way down. Uh, this is before the tailgate in the Uber on the way down. And then I'm like, Hey, we're in route. He goes, Oh, by the way, I, I forgot to tell you. For, for whatever reason, plans changed. We're now at a restaurant. I'm here with some of the guys. We're having breakfast. See if the Uber driver will, will detour you down here. So we detoured down there, and we walk in. Me and McKenna walk in, and the Uber driver stayed to take us over to the, to the stadium. And, and, like, Isaiah McKenzie's sitting there. <laughs> and I'm like, what's up, bro? <laughs> so that was cool. Sure enough. You didn't man, say that, I hope. <laughs> no, I did introduce myself, and I introduced McKenna. But uh, it was kind of neat. It's just... The, the room is the, this breakfast place is a hopping joint. It's basically if you're in Buffalo, poked yolk in Buffalo is what this place was. And uh, there's Kansas City Chiefs everywhere, like fans, Ch Kansas City fans. And I'm thinking to myself, they have no idea that there's two Bills players, or like two, three Bills players in this restaurant right now having breakfast with them. They, they don't even know, which is crazy to me. Um, so we get we get the field passes and like we're just geeking out at this point. Like we're gonna get to be. I've never been on the field. I don't even know what that means. Like you see those people down there on the field for like warm ups and stuff. Then we go to the tailgate, which was cool, and we were there with uh, Anthony from Poncho's Army. We were there with Krista Kinnick was there. Uh, There's a whole bunch of people. Just just Lashawn was there. Lashawn Jermaine Warlock on Twitter. Warlock. All the all the usual guys. The Bills Mafia tailgates are always off the hook. His food. And obviously, you know, drinks and just a good time. And McKenna's like, why aren't people jumping through tables? And I was like, well, not everybody jumps through tables. And then sure enough, people started jumping through tables off of vans and buses, like <laughs> jumping off of vans and buses through tables. And McKenna's like, they're crazy. I'm like, yes, they are. Yes, they um, are. Yeah. So we had a really good time at the tailgate, just making memories. And it was different for her. She'd never done it before. She didn't understand why. Like, why is everybody just hanging out here? I'm like, it's we're socializing. We're just getting ready for the game, having fun, kind of connecting, which was cool. Um, so shout out to everybody that I, got, that I got the tailgate with. Love every single one of you guys and, the, and all the new mafia members that I, that I met uh, that have basically followed on Twitter forever. We head out. So we got to walk down to the stadium because uh, uh, 410 is when we're supposed to be there. And we get down on the field. And, bro, a couple things. Um, you guys are enormous in those pads and uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. You've met me. And some other people too. So, 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 so yeah. there's there's another content creator that met me for the first time at the Bills homecoming, and he tweeted out, "Joe Miller is close to being the size of an NFL linebacker." I'm not. I'm six feet tall, a little over six feet tall, but I'm 220 pounds, and I'm thin. I'm not fat. I'm a I'm a big, decent sized guy. And these and and like they come out, bro. And like the, the we're right there on the on the, so the so Mitch Morse is there, Josh Allen. They got the running backs. They're running the dual tandem, like running backs. You know, quarterback snap hands it off to running back and they're running biased zach moss who i've met like these guys are running by and like it's it's a hundred over a hundred like they're they're warming up and it's like all go like it's crazy stefan Diggs is running around throwing the football like just pure joy on the man's face and i've watched it from the stands but like to be there where he's five feet away from me just throwing the football to little kids throwing it to like camera people and reporters and they're dropping the ball and he's like what are you doing you're supposed to get like the whole experience and McKenna is she's just in another world. Josh yeah. Allen's right there. Everybody, Eric Wood walks up, fist bump. Uh, Eric Wood, a fist bump. You know, Sal, uh, Sal Capaccio. Um, you know, Brittany Williams walks in. Josh Allen's family's down on the sideline with us. The whole experience, I cannot begin to explain to you it's how exhilarating. Like yeah. every nerve ending is uh, firing at the moment, and it's but, like eye candy. You you're looking everywhere. Right, but the energy, like the yeah. energy that even because when you stand up, when you sit up, and I know you probably have it. You've probably done it for Bruno. You've sat in the stands for warmups. The energy doesn't feel the same when you're in the stands wherever you are 30 rows up and you're watching the warmups, it's not the same as when you're five feet from people. Like the energy is totally different. It was yeah. very cool. And then obviously Tyree kill is unbelievably built. Like the man is five foot 10, five foot 11 and built like a brick house. Like it's unbelievable how I think his thighs are as wide as my waist. It's unbelievable how dense he is yeah. as a human. Um, and then we get ushered off, you know, we're down there for an hour and we get ushered off. We make it up to our seats. Um, and then the game starts. And obviously the chiefs fans are fantastic. I've been to bills chiefs games in Kansas city before people on here have heard me talk about it. They're just, 
they're just they're they're like the Bills. And I, I basically tell people this: if you go to a Bills game or if you go to a Colts game, it's a lot of more pretentious, richy people. It's an experience more so than this college type fandom like we have, fanatical fandom in Indianapolis. First and second down, when the Bills offense is on the field, it's kind of quiet. And then third down, they get loud because that's what you're supposed to do. In Buffalo, first down when the when the opposing team's offense is on the field, first down, like they come out of the huddle, it gets really loud. And as soon as the ball is snapped, whoosh, it's quiet. Second down, same thing. And then third down, it's just louder. In Kansas City, it's just loud. As soon as like as soon as the, the play oh, clock I know, starts, I lived it. Yeah, as soon as the play clock starts, they're just loud. And they're loud in the same tone. And I'm a musician. So for me, that was impressive. Oh, uh, like it's one monotone noise, 70,000 of them. It's incredible. Well, the they've fact- got a consulting firm that, you know, <laughs> they come out and they train the fans. They come in waves by section and they the- work the pitch. No, you're too low. Bring yep, it yep. up. And then you know, some yep. of the altos they bring down a little bit. The national anthem and the home of the Chiefs. Like that's cool. Yeah, I'm not you a know, fan of that. The yeah. first down. You know, Chiefs, like all that stuff is really, really cool. Like just a fan. It's just a great fan base. They were all nice. They were scared crapless at times, which was funny. It was the experience itself was amazing. I don't want to talk about the game because we're going to talk about the game. But it was uh, I we are wonderfully blessed to have had the opportunity to go um, to be on the field. The, the, the time that I got to spend with McKenna and like the memories that we got to make is something she's never going to forget and I'm never going to forget. Obviously, we wish we wish. So so now I'm, I'm coming out of my feel my feelings. I'm actually happy now talking about it this way. So that's yeah, probably, well, how, I mean, that that's a memory you'll share forever. Yeah, you yeah know? for sure. And it won't be about the result of the game. It'll be about the experience that one time. So we got a couple super chats. <laughs> Go ahead. Read that one. Hey, uh, G dot seals. Thank you very much for joining in on the super chat. If Leslie Frazier gets hired away, hmm, Wink Martindale. Are you familiar with Wink? Does that mean we're hiring a game show host? <laughs> so Wink Martindale is the former defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. He just they just yeah. agreed to part ways. He didn't get fired. Yep. He's a three four guy traditionally. I don't know much about Wink. Um, I know that he's a great defensive coordinator. He's a great defensive mind. The question is, is he wholly sold out to the three four like Rex was? Rex was three four three four three four only. Jim Schwartz four three four three only. Or is he a guy that can kind of has and can can kind of dabble between them, depending on what his personnel is? I would prefer to not see a three four guy come in here at all. And destroy. well, it's not a three four anymore, right? It's a three three, right? So it's three, a three, three, three five. Three, yeah, three 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 hybrid oh. type of a thing, which is great. Mm. Uh, this is my guy Matt Gould. So Matt Gould and I go way back. Matt is Matt is a uh, cameraman actually. Well, it, it, just going back to what you said before, I mean, you have oh. to have a guy who can walk up and play on the line, and then. You know, one of the guys that's lined up on the tackle, he's got to be comfortable playing on the inside shade. Right. And then, you know, we don't, I mean, I love our guys up front, but I don't think Star's the guy. And I don't think um, Phillips is the guy for playing a zero. Um, yeah, yeah. That's a monster position to play. So I yeah. don't, maybe I'm wrong. I know, I, I certainly don't think it's Star, um, maybe Phillips. Yeah, my guess is is getting just to fit, wrap that thought up, and I jump to Matt a little bit. Matt super chat a little quick. They, yeah. They're probably going to make sure they get a four three guy because I think McDermott is a four three guy, and obviously our personnel is all four three, and they're not going to overhaul that defense. Agreed. So, so Matt Gould is a really good friend of mine. Goes way back, and uh, he actually is a he shoots. He's a cameraman for the Buffalo Bills all the time. He's been at the Olympics, so he's a he Sabers Buffalo Sabers. Matt's an awesome dude, good friend. But he says I've I've been lucky enough to have my kids around for some of the sporting events I've worked at. That's a memory you've made for a lifetime. Nicely done. So yeah, it was it was a special moment and a special time um and it was oh really- like i know exactly what you mean uh, you know having bruno there when he was a freshman you know we weren't on the field uh yeah we were on the field pregame for a minute or two but better than that we were at the we were at the saturday walk through practice just yeah, yeah. you know standing around with all the offensive linemen and just that feeling you know came back to me and i know he was just shuddering in awe yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, she had a smile that you could not wipe off her face. I mean, it was just whether it was Steph Dig standing there or Josh Allen being, you know, 15, 20 feet away or he, his parents you know, I, being I, right there. I want everybody to know. I mean, I think, you know, and maybe not every player is like this, but even as a retired player, I remember the moment when I met LaDainian Tomlinson. Nice. And I was like, I, I am shaking your hand. Oh my God, I am such a huge fan. <laughs> 
And I, you know, I try to be a fan of people first, players second, and he just always struck me as such a class act. And yeah, you know, you admire players for different reasons, but you know, it's a great feeling. Yeah, it is a great feeling. And you know, and I think by and large, you know, I spent a lot of time living in the city of Buffalo and spent a lot of time uh, in and out of the restaurants, not the bars, but the banks and you know, uh, laundries and stuff like that. And people were incredibly wonderful appreciative kind respectful and you know those are the, those are always the best engagements they can yeah. cheer in the in the stands but the fan that approaches you and just says god you know i'm just such a big fan of you guys you know we root for you like crazy it, yeah. it means so much yeah it's 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 it, it escapes us as fans at times and it's overwhelming when we realize that you're just normal people too so I used to work. I used to work at the Tops at McKinley. So 1993, 94, and I think 95, I worked at the Tops at McKinley. So I'm there early, and, and Marv would come in almost every day. And I was in produce one day, and he walks up to me. He's like, "Excuse me," and I'm like, "Yes." He goes, "Do you have any blueberries?" And I'm like, "Marv Levy is asking me for blueberries. <laughs> you better deliver too." <laughs> Where would you rather be? That right act like here. a pro. Where <laughs> right would you now. rather be in produce <laughs> or soup? <laughs> hysterical bruce smith walked in one time the dude's butt was like up to my chest like he had the longest legs i've ever I tell seen you, man like when people ask me about uh the playing days i always say to them i say you just you can't wrap your brain around it not only do mm -hmm. they do we and uh, you know formerly used to do things with our bodies that is just incomprehensible yeah, yeah. right yeah. but just freaks all of us just freaks yep, yep. just the the muscle the you know, just the appearance of it all. Even the little guys like McKinsey, you know, I mean, yeah. you're just, it's astounding. By the way, I just noticed whatever you got to do, I better get one of those shirts. How do I oh. get that shirt? Let's well, talk about that got... shirt you're wearing. Yeah, it was so cool. Mark, um, man, I'm so bad with names. Mark gave it to me, made him up. May He made some for my family too. They're in the mail. I'm just like over the moon. How cool is that, right? That shirt is bad. A. That shirt is bad. A. Yeah, I you want know? that shirt. I'll so ping for, him for you on for, the old. Uh, for those of you that are that are listening and not watching, Josh is wearing a black John Fina shirt. It's JF seventy. John, <laughs> not Josh. I don't know what Josh. I didn't is say wearing. Josh. I said I said John Fina. It sounded I, like Josh. I, if I did, I apologize. John Fina should be John Fina seventy with the swoosh or the the yeah. Bills the Bills swoosh. Um, I want that shirt really bad. I'm pretty. Yeah, sure hit so. him up. It's uh, Bills Mafia six one seven Mark of Poncho's Army. Mark, <laughs> if you're listening, charge Joe triple. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait i gotta wrap up i gotta wrap up my my story so we're at the airport so mckenna gets a kick out of every time we're someplace and somebody recognizes me as joe miller podcast guy um it's happened a couple times including a bill's practice this kid came up and i was sitting there with pat moran uh i was sitting there with zach sheldon from train wreck sports um i can't remember who else a couple other people were sitting there we were just watching practice and uh this kid kid walks up 14 years old he goes are you joe miller and i was like yeah he goes love your work and walk nah, away. And that I was love it. your work. <laughs> Just walked away. So we're sitting at the diner in Baltimore today. Sitting at the diner in Baltimore. There's a diner inside the Baltimore airport. And I'm I'm on the phone. I'm on the like I'm on a work call. Like I'm I'm working because it's Monday and I'm on my laptop and working. She's eating breakfast. And I hear I hear like and I look and like there's a window a glass window here that's to the concourse. And there's a dude standing out there holding my Twitter up and he points at the, at his phone and he goes, Is that you? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yes. He goes, can I come in and talk to you? And I'm like, yes. So he comes you around. Always, and You always tease yourself for being a ginger, but that's like a recognizable <laughs> thing, right? I mean, Except all of us. They, they always find me by the nose. Like, <laughs> if the guy's appendage is like three feet from his eyeballs, it's John Fina. The problem like, is. No, it's the nose. I mean, it's Fina. It's all Irish people look alike, though. That's the problem. So I was like, hey, yeah, luck of the draw. So he came in. It was Mafia Mike, uh, which I've actually been friends with on Twitter. And we've interacted a ton of times. So it was really, really cool to meet him. Uh, another super chat from Pamela. Uh, Pamela, thanks for being a part of the show. Looks like Dable will be gone and a high possibility Frazier will be too. What does that mean for us? So uh, that's you first. Okay, so this is where I'm at on all this. So in my, in my opinion, in my guesstimation, I have a pretty good inkling that Brian Dable is probably going to the Giants, right? Obviously, Joe Shane just got hired there. It was rumored last week when Joe Shane was interviewing that they want a package deal. They want Joe Shane and Brian Dable. So they're looking to do basically the McDermott, Brandon Bean thing only on the junior level and then have those guys grow into, you know, McBean. So I have more than likely believed that he's gone. Josh Allen today talked about in his press conference that uh, if that happens because he was asked that he would like to see somebody from the staff 
promoted. So he's talking about Ken Dorsey, that he would love to see Ken Dorsey become that guy uh, as far as the offensive coordinator. What his <clears throat> credentials are, what his ability to be an offensive coordinator, your guess, everybody's guess is as good as ours. We Obviously, we have no idea. We know that he's been in that room with Josh since the beginning, so they're connected, and there's obviously a lot of trust. Josh d- t- trust, but you can probably speak to, before we get to Frazier, there's a moment in good quarterbacks' lives and Josh Allen is elite, top one, top two, top three, right? He's elite in this league. There's a moment, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, where the offense becomes theirs. Josh has got to be approaching that time, right? Where Yeah, I'm this, glad this you is... didn't say he was there because I, I wouldn't agree with that at all. Uh, you know, just so young, uh, right. hasn't, hasn't seen and lived and played enough football yet to be at that point, but... I, but it's the type of person that he is that he's tracking toward that. Right, and I, I right. would I would definitely say that. And look, I could be wrong. Maybe he's the guy already. Maybe he's studying six hours of film a day out, you know, in the offseason. I know he's getting work in the offseason. Yeah, but- uh, I know uh, what's the uh, quarterback at the Giants, Danny O'Brien. Who's that? What's his name? Uh, the quarterback Dan- uh, is Zach Wilson. The Giants. Oh, the Giants. Uh, Danny Daniel Jones. My bad. My bad. Yeah. Oh, Danny Jones. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel Jones. I, I think uh, Josh's coach over in California is going to get a new client. I mean, <laughs> if Dable goes over there, and look, here's Jordan my Holmes. here's my feeling. Like, oh, we don't know anything about um, uh, Dorsey. Dempsey Dorsey. Ken, Dempsey. Ken Dorsey. I'll get it right when he gets the job. Okay, I swear to God. <laughs> Until then, he's Dempsey. I'm sorry. So, uh, no disrespect. Eventually, somebody has to go from being a quarterback's coach, assistant, offensive coordinator, you know, to the next level. Coaches, it all goes up, right? Right. right. And uh, that's going to be up to McDermott, I think, more than Bean. I think I think McDermott would have to sell that to Bean and then have the support of the surrounding uh, remaining offensive coaches. Right, right. And uh, certainly Josh, probably uh, Stefan Diggs, but... Uh, it, it, whether it happens or not, I think in my estimation, it would make more sense to me to maintain some continuity for right. Josh. Right. And I, I think, I think if you are there coaching him for the past four years, uh, you know, you see his abilities and you see inside the man a little bit more. Yeah. So I, I just wonder how much, it, how much does it provide Josh to your point, that continuity and what I was alluding to is how much, how much, how much not control how much ability is he going to have to to say, Ken, we've done a lot of great things. I like, let's keep it as much as we can the same. Yeah. So, and then Frazier, there's a lot of conversation about Frazier. There's a lot of idiots on Twitter right now talking about letting McDermott go when he's never going to learn and blah, 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 which is the most ridiculous playoffs four to five years, three years in a row, AFC championship or AFC champion, AFC East champions twice, AFC championship game last year. You're not firing Sean McDermott. You're not firing Leslie Frazier either. So if Les- Leslie Frazier stays and he doesn't get hired away, he stays, right? If he gets hired away, I have a little bit of, for me, and this comes into the game stuff, which we haven't even gotten to yet, which is fine. Um, for me, I'm ready to see a little more aggression, aggressiveness out of this defense. I don't mean blitz crazy. So that's no, not what, what that's I not what I'm mean. talking about. I think, were, I think what you're saying is a little bit more creativity, bringing pressure. There's, there were times yesterday where they just should have done something different yeah right? we both say that i i mean in the first half i thought we put some pretty nice pressure on mahomes we just came Nobody, up dry but that's the same thing that happened in the afc championship game I, last I, year. I i understand that but i'm saying you know if you if you have the pressure on the guy you know you got to make the sack you got to right. make the you got to force the bad throw the the poor decision that gets tipped that gets intercepted right. and right. we just didn't get there but adding another guy doesn't oh you know you don't always have addition by addition sometimes you get subtraction by addition you know, you know he's slickered and snot we decided yeah, that yeah, right yeah, so yeah. you bring five and he still gets free and you know we saw him flick a couple yesterday that were yes. admirable yes and that's i mean i don't want to go over the moon on the guy but uh, so to the they, point go ahead it, it could be the it, it could be twice as bad and three times yeah. as bad on sunday you know what i mean if, if, so, if it's wrong, going right. back to Leslie, right? Yes, Les, that's where we want to go. Yeah. So, look, if he gets hired away, of course you're going to do that. If you're Leslie Frazier, I mean, you're looking at four million dollars a year as a head coach, or three point two versus you know six seventy five as whatever his salary is. But it's an appreciable difference, appreciable change in your whole 
you know, yeah. future. Yep. And I'm not going to judge the man on the last 13 seconds of the game. Would I have coached it that way or lined up that way? No, but I have the benefit of, you know, being able to look back at it in the moment. I didn't get it either. Um, but I, I still don't judge his volume of work based on 13 seconds. Will, will owners or general managers? <clears throat> no, I don't it, think the, so. The it'll, problem- it'll come up, it'll come up in discussion. It'll come up. Oh, you know, Hey, let's talk, you know, we like yeah. you. You, you got a great track record. You know, you did great things in Buffalo when you didn't always have the personnel. You know, what, what explain to me? I mean, you've been yeah. on a job interview. Explain sure. to me what happened here. Yeah. And, yeah. And be- apparently we're not going to get a story on that out of, uh, out of the staff. Right. Because well, they said, we're not, we're not going to address it. It also, it also starts with special teams because they messed up from jump as far as the kickoff goes, but uh, we'll get to the thoughts of the game. We're, well, we're, we're, if we're, you we're, believe that that would have been the better play to squib it. Or, or at least kick it so they have to return it. If you kick that ball to the two-yard line, he's got to run to the point he gets tackled. Does it take three seconds, four seconds, right? Now, the fear is he returns it. That's the fear. So Right, but you're balancing a known quantity against an unknown quantity. Yeah, McDermott said... the end zone, I know they get it to 25. McDermott basically said there were some details there. I'm not going to get into it basically. Mm-hmm. So my guess is if I, I guess that if it was what he wanted, he would have said, no, that's exactly how we re- what designed it. That's what we wanted to happen. Like I, I, I would take him in his word. Well, Trig- hey, chips are going to fall over the following days and weeks for sure. Yeah. So Trig- whether Trig- by coaches leaving or coaches asked to be leaving. Right. Triggs is uh, it was a super chat. He says Dorsey for offensive coordinator, Chad Hall for assi- uh, assistant offensive coordinator. I would probably agree with that. That's probably what will happen. And then my guess is to finish the Fraser talk, Fraser talk, more than likely they'll find a 4-3 guy, whether it's a guy like Vic Fangio or somebody that they want that's up and coming that's going to mesh well with what McDermott wants. Because McDermott is a 4-3 guy, but it's a little different. His defense is a little bit different than some of the other 4-3 guys that are out there. Thoughts well, on the you, game? Still need, you still need two pieces on the defense to fix it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but in regard, yeah, I'm just talking about from a, from a coordinator standpoint. So mm-hmm. let's, uh, we got, we, we're, we're heavy into the show already. And, the good we can talk about for years and the bad we can talk about for years real quick. Just I've kind of given my thoughts on the game. What are your quick, just thoughts on that football game? What you're expecting versus what happened? Well, look, I, I mean, I, I picked the bills a little heavier because I thought in the end, you know, we'd turn a, a small lead into a big lead and, uh, but not with, not in a cocky way, you know, right. I, I always figured it would be close. And uh, that was my expectation to come out of there with a victory. I just felt like, everything was kind of coming together a little bit um tackling oh my god they, i guess the somebody counted and said we only missed like seven tackles seven. but we as you watch the game each missed tackle felt like five on its own so it felt like 35 missed tackles yeah but i i don't know that that includes times when people whiffed so there was the run one run by uh was it pringle where he went mm. out and then like split three defenders and just somehow sneaked by all three of them and like mario addison basically stopped he just stopped pursuing him and the dude ran right yeah, by that him. was weird right yeah and they gained I thought, I I think he, scored. he scored on that play right yeah, yeah my so my i didn't feel like the game was too big for the team so nope, i would i agree I would, with that I offense or defense. I don't feel like the game was too big for the team. I literally feel, and you can speak to this because you're a former player. I feel like defensively speaking, there was a plan. There was a scheme and it just didn't work. Well, it did work. It worked enough for a little while. They only had like three breakdowns. I mean, look points on defense. It did not work. Yeah, I know. I mean, but we got, we got some stops. uh, That doesn't include a missed field goal and a mixed missed extra point. Okay, fine. I mean, look, P. I've heard people saying, "Oh, well, no, you know, we didn't cover Tyreek Hill." I'm still waiting for somebody to cover the guy. Well, you know, we we we, if we get we take away three big plays. I think we're in a hell of a lot of different if, conversations. If we want to talk about, so this comes back to the scheme thing, and this is actually in the notes, just from stuff I wanted to ask you, um, just because you are the expert. When you look at uh, Tyree Kill's touchdown run that he had, or touchdown catch that he had, the 65 yard touchdown catch. They're playing a deep cover two shell. Tyreek Hill was Levi Wallace was on Tyreek. I don't know. I, I know you chart the game and you watch it back. Levi Wallace is on Tyreek. He was not double covered. They left Levi Wallace one on one with a deep co- cover two shell, of which Micah Hyde shaded to another player. It was one on one. He hits the crosser, hits him in stride, gone. There was yeah. there's very much a 
We are not going to let them beat us over the top, no matter what, even to the point of ex- putting our corners on islands, Taron Johnson, Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson. We're going to put them on islands, and we're going to sit way back. And they did yeah. it all the way through three, 13 seconds left. Yeah, look, I I, I think that... <laughs> I would, I guess what I'm saying is I, I don't mind that strategy, but when the guy runs a shallow cross like that, first of all, I don't care who it is, uh, you know, the guy from the Rams or Tredavious or, or, or Levi, you're, you're mm-hmm. just not going to stay in a foot race with Tariq Hill, but you've no. got to be able to collapse down from the shell and make the tackle. So I don't put that on Levi Wallace. And I, I think you got to, I mean, you can't press the guy, two guys. I, I see you can roll coverage over the yeah. top. I just don't know. I mean, it, it looks that way so easily, but, you know, they, they do so much by down and distance, formation, dictating where, where everybody lines up, and the expectation is that if a guy catches a shallow cross, someone's going to tackle him at 14 to 16 yards. And that's an, ex, an unfortunate, acceptable uh, gain for a guy like him. I agree. And they didn't make the tackle. And I was not putting that on Levi Wallace. So please No, I, I, I yeah. didn't think you were. I'm just saying that somebody has to be in that dog's ass position. Yeah, the reality is, is if you're telling me Levi Wallace versus Tyree Kill single covered, if you're telling me anybody but Jalen Ramsey single covered against Tyree Kill, I'm taking Tyree Kill every time. So this is definitely not on Levi Wallace necessarily. Mm-hmm. Even to the point of 13 seconds, even to the point of overtime, they were just playing. So the 13 seconds part, they're playing 35, 40 yards off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, all that was baffling was to me. That I didn't understand. Plays. I mean, they needed two 30 yard plays. That's all they needed. And they got him. Easy. But the thing that killed me about that mm-hmm. was uh, look, I'm okay with that defense if they have no times out. Right. Right. But they had three times out. Yeah. You got, you got to come up. And I don't look. We, we we got to Mahomes, but we couldn't bring him down with four guys. Right. So what was the point of bringing four guys? We could have brought two. We could have pressed at the line of scrimmage on their on their best guys and still ran the same shell. Yeah. I mean, we could have done that all day, and we could have had you know uh, Addison or Edmonds spying in the middle of the field. And, uh, that's and, the part that, that baffles me. And in the very last play, which uh, of uh, of the fourth quarter, I'm looking at how Levi's lined up, and I'm saying to myself, he is lining up to the letter of the definition of this defense, but the defensive call is wrong. That's what I'm thinking. After they call I'm the thinking there's no, there's no way that Levi Wallace should be lined up, you know, eight mm-hmm. yards outside. Was it Kelsey? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and 14 yards off the ball. That made zero, zero sense, sense to me. Zero sense. Zero, I mean, line up on them. Look, they have the timeout. They don't care. They don't need the sideline. Yeah, yeah. Contest the catch. Yes. Cover. Maybe maybe two guys get their hands up, you know, affect the throw. How about uh, just dragging it, Kelsey to the ground? Literally <clears throat> taking a five-yard defensive holding penalty. And it bleeds five seconds off, four seconds, five seconds off the clock. Uh, Eric, I'm going to get to your point in a minute. I think by the third quarter, I was in the stands, 300 section, row two, 40 yard line, yelling, "Don't let him out of the pocket." What 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 the Chiefs did so well was they kept Josh Allen in the pocket. The problem is, is Josh Allen still ate them alive from the pocket. The Bills were allowing him to escape. They, they, he was just getting. He's greasy. You said it. They were not. I, uh, you keeping say him allowing him to miska- to escape. Uh, allows think, a, allows a tough yeah, word. They were for, forcing him out. So they're pressure. You either pressure him and bring him down, or you don't. Right. I mean, well, and I think the maybe that's why they didn't bring more pressure. Like I, like I was saying to you earlier, if you yeah. bring more pressure and you don't get there, you're m- subtracted behind you. This, this, and, both, you know, both of these quarterbacks is it's a pick your poison. How do you want? Well, so I was just about to say that. I mean, how, our how guy do was do doing things to their guys <laughs> right. that they're you know on their podcast going. Thank God we got. <laughs> thank God there's no more Josh Allen. Josh Allen with the freaking right. horse muscles knocking right. out our DBs. Right. You know For what sure. I mean on a run. Well, or not even that, but throw. I mean, it was. You've got Patrick Mahomes who does that one play where he like shifts his arm angle and throws, you know, throws a 15 yard laser. Josh did that too. I saw Josh do that too. Josh did it as well, but they didn't talk about Josh doing it. Both of these guys, it's literally how do you want to get beat? 
do you want them to beat you this way or do you want them to beat you that way? Because you can't confuse them. You can't if you move them off their spot. They're they're going to make plays. It's just they're they're both just unbelievable quarterbacks. Eric Farrell with the super chat coming in. I apologize for getting taking so long to get to you, Eric. Much more than the kick. Why didn't we put eleven in coverage? Why rush anyone with thirteen seconds left? Put five. I guess that's a good question. Do you? I've never seen a formation where you drop all the defensive linemen back four yards, five yards off the line of scrimmage. I guess you can. You It'd could. be weird, but you yeah. could. And, and literally to that point, flood that whole area, right? And then as soon as somebody catches the ball, you just tackle them. Yeah, it would be wild. You know, that's the – right. so you'd still have to chase our, uh, Mahomes in space, but you wouldn't have to worry about it because he can't run the ball. Well, he could, but he wouldn't get 30. At some point in time, it's going to be basketball, and the and the competition committee is going to have to do something because they're going to realize <laughs> within 20, 30 seconds – if I just defensively hold, if they if they get the ball at the twenty yard line, and I def, do do defense commit defensive holding on every play but the last one because the game can't end in a, in a defensive penalty. If I commit right. defensive holding every play ten times, thirty seconds gone. No, no, point, I, I don't disagree with you, and I've I've argued that point forever. It's like you know, if I were on press coverage on the seven yard line, and, and I feel like I'm going to get beat, I'm tearing that guy down. If right. I'm leaping and and getting and getting ankles. Right, because the downside is three yards. So what? Right, right. So you know? what? Versus and, and if you're in the middle of the field, my my concern is they. You know, look, it's got to be a million different scenarios to have a pack. Got to have a package for this, right? <laughs> so I mean, you got to be thinking. I got to think that they should have had a, a a package. This didn't look like a package for anything. That that's my concern. I was like, mm. what? Yeah. Yeah. Now you get me all hyped up. Well, yeah, you've already got me there. I'm so let's talk about – we've already talked about a lot of the good already, which is Josh Allen. I thought Devin Singletary looked great early in this game. Um, the offensive the, line looked really good. Spencer got, got do, uh, clubbed a couple times, but by and large, they looked really good. They looked super good, and that was another thing too because we've talked about Ryan Rick Bates a lot on this show and all the shows. That's a big old boy too. I was actually – you. the bench guys typically aren't – the John Fina's right. So in your day, you were the the big guy. You were the left tackle. You, you know, House Ballard was the star, starter because he was enormous. Ryan Bates is a big big boy. Like I was surprised when I because he walked right by me. And I was like, that is a big old boy. Ryan Bates is a big guy. That offensive line played super duper well. Um, very, and, I was and, very and impressed. Knox Knox blocked really well. I mean, he had a drop which he shouldn't have dropped. But what's funny is um, really well. Gabriel Davis, the game that he had, you know. I went in, we all went in saying that Dawson Knox has to be a big part of this offense for like last time, week five, week six, whenever it was, for the Bills to come out on top. And Dawson kind of didn't. He was kind of quiet. Yeah, yeah you say that, you know, and, and neither of us really has access, time, and understanding the game plan. But, right, right. you know, Gabe Davis is a hot hand at the minute and at the moment. And sometimes your role is to suck coverage. For sure. That so, was what that's what Diggs so, was. I mean, role look was. at Stefan Diggs, right? He that, had five catches role. for nine yards or something. That was crazy that was, like that was that. his role in that football game. That was his, his role. role in that, and I think he was probably pretty happy with it up until they went in the locker room at the end. And late on the last drive, as much as other people probably lost their minds because that's what Bill's Mafia does. I love that Josh, he was covered, and Josh basically just flicked the ball out there to give him a chance. Josh mm. was like, here you go. Here's the ball. Threw it 20 yards downfield, 25. And obviously, Stefan had to play defense because he was being held, and he was holding the guy at the same time. But I love that. Hey, you know what? Here, see what you can do. Got to tell I, you, man. Just looking at Josh in those, um, you know, that last drive in the final minutes, he looked like he was playing in the first quarter. Yeah. And the way he assesses the defense, I mean, he's he's really coming in. I, I love it. I love watching yeah. it. It's 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 going to be a fun ten more years. Pam and Donna back into the uh, into the room of the super chat. Thank you, Pamela. We love you. Um, what made me feel a little better today was watching what everyone was saying about us. It wasn't the normal Bills crap to the bed and just walk uh, walk and talk about the other team. Allen was just as great uh, with Mahomes. It's true. A lot of people have changed the narrative coming out of a law. I had friends of other fan of uh, fan friends who are fans of other teams texting me after that football game talking about Josh Allen. People that are in other markets, Bengal markets, places yeah, like I that. had the same. Bunch yeah. of my buddies were like, "Dude, I'm so sorry about your team, but holy cow." Right. 
right. That kid is really good. Like it's, yeah. he, he's probably the best and quarterback what, in the league. Like it's crazy. What about what about that ascendance though? I mean, like from major disrespect so recently to forever. Yeah. yeah. To now all of a sudden, like he's going to be. T- and what's yeah? It's I'll say I'll say this. So I, I I've been meaning to get this off my chest. Uh, Tyron Matthew comes out of the game. Yep. We have some, some pretty significant success with the deep ball. You know, we hadn't been going to it a lot right, uh, right. during the regular season, but Tyron Matthews out of the game. What you know? What yeah. kind of took so long? The, the the protection aside from about three plays was solid. Mm-hmm. Why weren't we going a little deep? Why Oops. why weren't we testing a secondary without the the honey badger? That honey- that. That had me vexed a little bit too. Tony, Tony Romo said it before the deep pass, the bomb to Gabe Davis. He said, "I, I either felt or said he's he he said I either felt or he said I just said. I think he said I felt. I felt the Bills were being too conservative. They're being well, too. I, safe. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even need Tony Romo to say it. It might have been harder for you guys to recognize. You know, sometimes when you're at the game, the disappearance of a player. Sure. But you know, in TV, you get the full shot, the whole thing. And I'm like, as soon as I saw Tyron Matthews down, I'm like. Oh, pressure those guys go deep yeah you know gabe, gabe davis isaiah mckenzie uh you know whether it's beasley or Diggs underneath route pulling the safety and that's exactly what we did we yeah, had no. an underneath guy that the safety had to show enough respect to to slow him down by a half step and then they're open yeah no i knew he was gone because when he went down he grabbed the top of his helmet so I thought that he was faking as though Josh hit him because he'd missed the tackle that he whiffed so bad. Cause he whiffed, he totally whiffed on Josh and I didn't, they didn't, that's the only bad thing about Kansas city. Their board, their, their boards are tiny and suck and they don't show replays. It's awful. Mm. So I just assumed that he kind of was faking like I'm hurt. And then all of a sudden he was gone. And then like the dude that was standing next to me was like, yeah, Tyron Matthews out. Cause he was, I don't know. I think he got a tweet from a friend or a text from a friend that he was out of the game. And then obviously watching it back today, it was his player that hit him in the head uh, with his kneecap, I think, yeah. or something like that. But no, that was yeah. that was that was big to your point. So, uh, Triggs back with the super chat. We're missing speed on the defensive uh, on the defensive line. The X factor. I have been. You've heard. You have heard me say it. So is Spence. When JJ Watt became available, I want a havoc wreaker. I, we need a havoc wreaker on that defense. A guy. A t- I know you can't just go get a TJ or a JJ Watt. You can't go get a Joey Bosa. You know, you, you just can't go get that I, guy. I disagree. Although I was going to say Melvin Ingram was available. I, I, He's a three, four guy, but Melvin Ingram was available. The Bills didn't even make a move for him, but yeah, I, I, I disagree in this respect. I think we have the right people. I don't think they have the right attitude. So, I mean, you take a guy like JJ Watt, he's got a predetermined rush before the ball snapped. He knows what he's doing. If you go back and I've said this for weeks now, but apparently you just don't <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> Our guys are coming off the ball without a plan, and they're doing this shake thing as they run toward the offensive lineman. Now, whether that's a, a Leslie Frazier thing, where they're just you know too much gap control or sure. the gap integrity on your rush, I am not that guy. I mean, as an offensive lineman, I'm begging you to run at me without a plan. That is like my dream. Right. You know, I I think the guys are there, but either they're not free or they're not confident. But we need a guy that's going to make his move off the ball. That's part of what Bruce did. Bruce yeah. would come out, and he didn't care if it didn't work this time, because eventually it would work. It work. And you don't need, you know, you don't need to have Epinesa have five sacks, right? Two's good, one's good, and yep. if the other guys are doing the same thing, you know, one for four guys is four sacks. That's a game-winning performance up front. Right. But right, there's right. there's just two. I still see Jerry Hughes do it. Um, from time to time, but I, I, I honestly, I don't see the other guys doing it. You got to have a sellout plan. Even when I coach, you know, I coach offensive linemen in high school, but when I see defensive linemen doing, I'm like, what are you doing? Mm. I mean, you have no plan. Your, you, your reason for being is to get the guy behind the guy in front of you. Mm. And if you, the ball snapped and you're like, well, maybe I'll arm under, maybe I'll arm over, maybe I'll step go, maybe I'll step club. It's too late. You're done. Right. right. You just got to say, I'm doing it. And if I get beat, I get beat. Right. But the alternative is worse. Yeah, for sure. By the way, there was something. Am I getting whiny? Am I getting whiny? Do I need to go back to my podcast voice? 
there's somebody in the chat and I just deleted his message that was upset oh. that apparently we're not responding to all of the comments. We so are. for oh, the those, comments, no, 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 no. Not, not, super, not super chats, the comments. So oh. we're, we're recording a podcast and we're having a football conversation. The other shows that take all of the comments. That's what those shows do. There are people. But we that appreciate take... you being here. It might yes. just be your first time though. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. he, I think he left, he said, peace out, which is fine, but please totally. understand the format of the show expression. at the end of the day, our conversation and the podcast that this is mm -hmm. gets borderline interrupted by the super chats, which we appreciate. So yeah, we love it. Yeah, we love it, but we're not going to. We're not here. The script for and, us and, is and to, you know to respond to all the comments. So and, and no admonishment to podcasts that just do the no. comment section. No, that's great as well. So yeah, we should the answer the question now that he's off. The, <laughs> the work. The bad, the, work. the ugly. Okay, here's my work for the off season. Yeah. All right. Uh, Grills Mafia, here's my work. I pledge to force Jerry Ostrowski to post his barbecue pictures because he put up a brisket yesterday and ribs. And I said, you expletive, 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 better post that. I never went back to look. So that, that's my work for the offseason. Give Jerry a little confidence. Yeah, Jerry's I want dude. everybody there to at Jerry right now. <laughs> everybody should be following Jerry. That's for sure. He's a good dude. I don't sure, know if he's yeah. here or not, but uh, I know he's got he, great he tweets. joins us at times, which is fun. But uh, yeah. the, the work for me or the bad in this football game, and I guess it doesn't really matter at this point, I, I don't know where, so I don't know where I land. And this is, this is where it all sums mm. up. And I know you're already, you're already grumbling. And I apologize that I'm making you. No, grumble. no, no, you know, I'm not grumbling. I'm thinking last year. So I'm going to take you back to last year, the AFC championship game, mm. the Buffalo bills on offense and defense were wildly unprepared for that football game. And obviously mm. we know what happened before that football game. Leslie Frazier, Brian Dable, both got interviews and they got interviews for head coaching jobs. The Bagulas then, after the season is over, to the competition committee or the rules committee, pr pr proposed to not allow assistants or staff members to uh, interview until after the championship games. So in that two-week window, they wanted to push it back to the two-week window because, well, they didn't say why, but we can all assume, infer, that it's because they felt their, their coordinators were wildly distracted. The NFL actually mm -hmm. did the opposite. They backed it up two weeks. So they made it, mm -hmm. you can now interview two weeks before the season ends, which nobody did. Literally nobody got asked for permission to, to interview before the season ended, which I thought was interesting. Dable was ready. That offense was ready. Whether it was Dable, whether it was Josh, whether it was just they were doing and being who they were, great. I just feel like that game plan for that game could have been better. Defensively? I, defensively i know i know there's a lot of people out there that want to blame the, the players i've seen people blaming Lee. Oh, I, I, i've seen yeah. I, i've seen oh, people yeah. blaming termaine edmonds and and matt milano i've seen people blaming the defensive line when i when i view the deep two cover shell 35 yards off the line leaving all the cornerbacks and defensive backs on islands by themselves hoping to god that mahomes doesn't throw an 80 yard pass to me that's a scheme issue uh i'm not going to disagree with you entirely i think um I think you have to take certain precautions when you play a team that sure. has has the has the weapons that they have, and uh, you know there was a certain lack of gravitas, uh, like you said. They, they just they wanted to wait them out mm -hmm. and uh, hope that Josh or sorry Patrick didn't have a championship type performance, but he mm -hmm. did. Yeah. And the rest of them did. And that I don't love that gamble either. I'm on your side. I mean, I want to bring pressure. Um, I would, you know, it's a either uh, cut my head off or death by a thousand cuts. Right. Cut my head off. Just know? go head off. <laughs> yeah. Like when, you know, you see people staying on 16 in, uh, in blackjack. I hit that every time. I'd rather lose now than lose later and go through the pain of waiting. Right. 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 So I'm with you on that. I, I, but you can rewrite history. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you, we're not in there. We don't know if they felt like they had personnel matchup issues, so it was smarter to play it that way. Regardless, I still say go for broke. So Peyton, and this is where the aggressive stuff, situational football comes into play. So Peyton says, and this is a great comment. I saw an advanced metric that I think was revealing. Mahomes' average depth of target, 5.2 yards. Josh was 8.1. I think the defense actually did okay. The I agree with this statement. The caveat for me was inside of two minutes. 
That both of those offenses oh, yeah. hit the yeah. gas pedal to the floor. Josh beat their defense. Mahomes basically just took advantage of what the Bills were doing against him. It does that yeah, well, does that play? Do you understand what I'm saying when I say that? That Josh so Gabe Davis. You think their work? defense was in better position and Josh beat them. Or the whereas, receivers beat them. Whereas, whereas Patrick did really didn't have to do anything difficult. Threw a 15 yard crossing pattern to Tyreek Hill, who burned turns it into a 68 yard touchdown run. Because yeah, that was, because that they're playing way too deep and and their and their corners are single covered. Yeah, look, I I agree with you. I but I, you know, without knowing why, it's hard for me to to look back and say, uh, you know, it was the wrong, the wrong game plan. It's not my game plan. Sure, it's his. Sure. sure. Uh, and look, yeah, I think uh, I think he's going to get the get a head coaching job. I, I think he's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think he's got he a great demeanor. One. He deserves one. I, I would say so. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, I think he's, they're talking about his age, which is ageism, which is, I have a problem with. So I, you know, how old is he? At, uh, he's older. I'm not exactly sure of his age. I could Google it. But I mean, when you look at Bill Belichick ain't, ain't exactly young and he's still coaching. Andy Reid isn't exactly young. I mean, there's a lot Marv of. Marv Levy was like 30. Uh, <laughs> Pete Carroll, <laughs> Pete Carroll's in his 80s. I think he's, in, isn't he an octogenarian now? I think he's in his, his 80s. His son is the uh, offensive line coach here at Arizona. Yeah, so Leslie Frazier to start as a head coach. Eric Lambert says he's 62. So at 62, it's like, do you 62? want to 62? But at 10 years, people are thinking like, well, if he's going to be a head coach for 10 years, do you want a guy that's 72? Yes, he's fine. But uh, oops, yeah, so other people saying he's 60. So early yeah. 60s. But um, yeah, but overall, I'm going to get, so after we're done with this show, I'm going to be back into my feels. It has, I will be honest, John, it has helped me to talk about it. So go ahead. So you talked about, um, the work right so yes. i want to talk i don't want to talk about the game planning right because games are so far off right now i just want to see decisive moves made with respect to you know who on the uh free agent list that we're keeping or letting go i want yeah. to see you know i want to see exit interviews uh not that we'll see them but i think coaches got to sit down with each player in their group and have a talk well, guy, real, guys real on the talk. list. So start Star Latulale is going to be here next year because I think he's a twenty million dollar, eighteen million dollar cap hit. So they, they get, he's going to be here. Otherwise, they lose a crap ton of money. So it's better mm -hmm. to have the player and the and lose the money versus. Uh, and I'm I'm play. okay with that. I think Star's got life in him. I think when he was healthy, he played well. Yeah, I got I'm no issues with that. I'm just giving you giving you stuff. So Harrison Phillips, uh, his he's he's a restricted free agent. Jerry Hughes is long in the tooth. And I think his contract is up. My guess is, is he probably won't be back. I agree. Um, I said at the end of last season. Addison's also. Addison uh, is up as well. Uh, Vernon yep. Butler is up, which Vernon Butler can go. Um, I said at the end of last season that the Bills Sorry, love Vernon. to do this luxury thing, which is spend all of this money on the defensive line. They're the, they're, the, they're, the, they're the highest paid defensive line in football. And that includes defensive lines with Aaron Donald and Ndamukong Sue and Fletcher Cox and these guys that are like absolute machine, like world record or wreckers, havoc wreakers, most expensive defensive line in football. I said at the end of last season that that's a luxury they cannot afford any longer because it didn't work. We spend all this money on the defensive line. We rotate all these guys at 48%. We get no productivity out of them. They, they ran it back. They did it again this year. And to my, in my opinion, it wasn't similar results. And I guess people could say, but they were the number one defense. But were they the number one defense when the Kansas City Chiefs when you played them? No, no, no. You're right. I mean, you have you have a point, but you know you gotta you've gotta we're we're in this bed right now. So what's the solution? Yeah. That, well, that's the question, kind of to you. What do you what do you, I think people were asking that earlier? What do you see? What does this defensive line need to do to get it productive? So I said Havoc Reeker, whether it's at linebacker Tremaine Edmonds is another one. Is he gonna are they gonna pick up? Or are they gonna re extend him? Are they let him play out his fifth year and, and let him go. Well, I think you're kind of you're you're. Let's talk about Tremaine Edmonds. I, I really don't know how to solve the D line salary issue. Um, what piece is missing? But you know, before I go on, let's just say Ed Oliver. You know, he 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 proved his worth. I think I, I like him. I think he'll continue to improve. Tremaine Edmonds. I don't know what you do. Not because I don't love the guy. Uh, I'm a concerned about you. Got a what is it? A tender or extend? The problem is if you don't, you got Milano, 
and Medikevich, and where are you? You don't have you don't have the guy, so you're shopping for a guy, right? So who's available? That's my concern. So there's always somebody available, right? I mean, there's always whether it's yes, at the I beginning or, or in the middle of the season. So a team there's that's... a supply chain issue, you know. Some some of the shelves are bare. <laughs> It's true. We got a super chat. I love Pamela. Go ahead. We do love Pamela. We have greatness ahead of us. Josh reached elite status. The whole team is in sync. We only get better. Go Bills! You know what, Pam? I got to be honest with you. I mean, I get upset about the loss. It's more of a, a heartbreak, like the way you're feeling. But inside of me, you know, I just, I have that same we can do it attitude. And I think Everybody should get 24 hours to, to lose their minds. And, and I've read some pretty ridiculous stuff on Twitter. I've been getting some <laughs> some direct messages that were giggle some. Yeah. Uh, but please bring them on. I respond to everybody. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. I think we only get better. I think we so, have a we have a commander in chief firing rockets. I, I would I would I would kindfully respectfully disagree there's a I have pollyanna joe i have concern mm -hmm. the concern that i have is you know we know that josh allen's uh fifth year which is next year is still part of his rookie contract after that then obviously his new contract kicks in which it, it escalates slowly but somewhat quickly so there's the window is closing the bigger problem is the cap is still low due to covid mm -hmm. it's going to go up not as much this year as next year so this year it's going to go up and the next year it's going to go crazy again because the new contracts and whatnot Stefan Diggs is going to need more money and Stefan Diggs deserves more money. He is, he is, he's the, the best number one wide receiver we have had since Eric molds hands down to the point that the bills had a, a number one wide receiver drop for so long that they didn't even know what a, a number one wide receiver was until Diggs got back <laughs> until Diggs got here. And then it was like, Oh, that's what a number one wide receiver looks like. There's a lot of guys that, that deserve and are going to command some money. So, so do you think we got to, address what are the the main issues what what do you think of the highest draft priorities right now linebacker and and corner i don't think it's corner i think with trey and i think dane jackson and levi inside of the scheme is serviceable as long as hyde and poyer are back there mm. i think it's d-line and i hate to say it because i'm a tremaine edmonds fan i love tremaine i I don't need Tremaine Edmonds to be, we've talked and we've had fun with it, Brian Urlacher or pick, you know, Luke Keekley. I need Tremaine Edmonds to be Fred Warner from the 49ers, who's just a solid, serviceable, in on every play, makes impact plays, knocks the ball out. Tremaine will just vanish for quarters at a time. And I, I love him. I think he's got all the capabilities. He's still young. I know that. I just, I, I need him. And maybe it is somebody in the defensive line in front of him that's missing. Maybe if there was somebody in the defensive line that's that was there, that's not there, whether it's an end, and maybe Rousseau will grow into the guy that we want or Basham will grow into that havoc wreaker guy that coordinators have to plan for. I just feel like there's still nobody on that in that front seven that – maybe save Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver might be the only one where coordinators are like, we got to stop that guy. If we, if we don't stop that guy, we're in for a really long day. And I think, and you can talk about this, I think there's something to be said. I think you're playing from behind automatically when you have the conversation, even if you had Bruce Smith in his prime on this defensive line, offensive coordinators are literally going to say, we got to stop that guy. We got to worry about him or he's going to wreck his day. Luckily, he's only going to play half the snaps, 48%. Could you imagine Bruce Smith playing 48% of the snaps? Yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not going to fight fight you on that. I like the rotational thing that they do. I just think going back again, you know, whether Bruce played 48 or or 86 percent of the snaps, the point was there there was a design to what he was going to do at every snap. That's sure. the lack. Now it's there's no doubt that a little bigger performance. Somewhere. From a, from a three technique or a, or a one technique is going to make Edmonds a better player. Uh, yeah, and I think that's the rub. I'm just concerned. I mean, I'd have to see who's available to replace him. He is very young, though, uh, I which guess. is a nice thing. I, I don't know. Man, Joe, look, I, I can't, you, we, it's like a circular conversation. Well, the question is don't... this. The question is, would you rather have nine blue chippers 
playing 46% or Bruce Smith and Jeff Wright. A guy that's going to like destroy Boomer Esiason. <laughs> like he's going to get to him more yeah, well, times than not. He's going to get guess the, to him. I guess the difference is, do you think that uh, a couple of those guys can exhibit some of the characteristics of Bruce Smith and why aren't they? So yeah. Groot's young. I think that there's a skill set there. I still think he has to learn to play with that body at this level. It's different yeah. than playing against college tackles. Yeah. He's got to learn more leverage and power. Uh, I think Basham can be a guy who plays across the whole defensive line. I think they need to they need to cut him loose. FA Obata, I don't know. I don't I don't think he ends up back here. I mean, I do like him, but I don't see that yeah. they gave him enough chance to do anything. For sure. My bigger concern is Epinesa. You know where where is he? Vanished where where are you? Where are you, kid? You look so lean. You know for that for being that lean. This is what I'm saying. The thing that made Derek Thomas such a nightmare wasn't that he was 290 pounds. It was that he was fast and he took two steps and he knew what he was going to do to you. Right. And we're just still coming off the line doing this shake shake thing. Go back and watch. The heads are shaking. Yeah. And I don't understand it. I, and I love all the guys. I mean, I hope everybody doesn't understand. I don't have anything against that. Vanessa. Nor do I. I mean, just set those guys loose. Tackles hate that. Yeah. And I don't think we're doing that enough. We so don't. Eric, go ahead. Eric I was just, I was, so, Eric, I was just going to clarify. I was not at all saying Fred Warner is serviceable. And if that came out of my mouth, I apologize. Fred Warner is a great linebacker. What I'm saying is this. I don't need Tremaine to be elite. So I don't need I don't need people at this point Ever, in Tremaine's we career. Knew what you meant Fred's just kicking you in the gonads. No, no, Eric is, but Fred is a that's great. He's a Fred great Farrell linebacker that's, is, that's is always kicking you in the Eric Warner. He's gonads. always there. I don't need people to be talking about Tremaine like this kid's going to the Hall of Fame in his, in year four. That's not what I need from Tremaine. I just I know need him. I know what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah and so I, and it didn't come out that way. Cool. Um, just make sure. Eric, thank, thanks for making clarity because. Sometimes Joe gets ahead of himself. And just need to, <laughs> I do talk about dial him back. Yeah, one mean, more super chat, and then we're going to get out of here because we're running long. Uh, Triggs with, with another one says Edmonds was an outside linebacker at Virginia Tech. The Bills moved, moved him to middle linebacker. So he, I have a rub with this, and you can speak to it. You played football. The Bills don't have a middle linebacker. They don't. Nobody does, though. The well, Bills I shouldn't say that. Go ahead. We run a 4 2 nickel. So Milano right. and Edmonds play the exact same position. They're basically right, they shade do. linebackers who get to do whatever they want to do. Edmonds just calls the defensive plays. That's the difference. He is not a middle linebacker. They have run some heavy 4-3 packages after the Colts game this year. So there were some games where after they got their faces bashed in by Jonathan Taylor, where they did go to a traditional 4-3, to which Edmonds did play middle. But by and large, 95% of the time, he is not a middle linebacker. Do you want to just right. back me up on that? No, no, you're right. Um, I think what you're what you're missing though is what if we do go to a three three, and then he does become that guy that's the outside linebacker. Then he's in space. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what the answer is. I mean, I, I just I don't think that throughout the entire season we've put him in great positions to, uh, I guess make huge plays he's been kind of a ground cover kind of guy yeah, yeah. you know he, he spends a lot of time in that middle zone area and it's hard to really assess a lot of that you see out some outside linebackers uh who are playing in the flat and it's it's a little bit more obvious i guess yeah. you know you say he disappears for quarters i have been trying to keep an eye on him he does come up on the run pretty pretty well recently yeah. he has in the past five six games but again, going back to what I think, they need just need to make decisions um, and, and not be afraid to let people go and you know, not be afraid to say we're re-signing this guy and here's why and just be very clear about it. I think that just gives everybody more uh, confidence. I love this question from Tom Whitmarsh. Thank you, Tom. He says, so is this the last off-tackle show? Well, I hope not. <laughs> you mean for the season or – forever it's definitely not forever nor is it necessarily for the season so I, I would imagine that so for everybody that's tuned in and paying attention both live and in podcast form i would imagine we can come back next week and probably do somewhat of a season wrap-up type show and then neither john nor i are really draft geeks so i would probably tell you that we're probably going to take a little bit of time off and then we'll come back around the draft time around free agency time just to kind of ch chime in on what the bills are doing would you agree with that john we haven't, yeah. we haven't even talked about it 
yeah look i'm uh, already i miss everybody in the chat and uh on twitter you know it's gonna calm down quite a bit so i i i'm not a draft geek um for me i, I don't even want to look at the draft until you know we we start making some decisions uh on the guys that are questionable or you know where, where are we going to sign them we're going to let them go whatever so to me it's like this next two to four weeks is just kind of limbo yeah. and he but actually yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do um once we see some decisions joe if you're up for it tom we'll do a show uh based on who's been released and who's been signed and then well, we'll do a show on the draft he, he has an idea for a show and maybe this is something we can talk about at some point hmm, extra pint idea <laughs> So a show, basically. Hey, Tom, we could use another sponsor along with Q42. <laughs> so he's talking about. I think. I think what he said on Twitter was just that you would go through and talk about a different maybe IPA weekly. So there would be a breakdown oh, of the segment somewhere. Oh, jeez. All right, we, we could do one of those. I don't know what kind of. Uh, I don't know what kind of. We we'll have to do it with guests, guest yeah. brewers, and things like that. You know, uh, I was with the Albuquerque Bills backers because I was working in Albuquerque. I got to throw a shout out to them. And it was a scramble. I just reached out like, hey, are there Bills backers here? And about nine people showed up. Ten. They were great people. One of the guys I met is a brewer. So mm. we could have him on. That would be um, sweet. Albuquerque is a cool town. They got a great setup for uh, for Bills Mafia. If you guys are in Albuquerque, don't feel alone. Go and catch a game with them. It's a pretty cool setup. And you obviously have somewhat of a connection at Resurgence here in Buffalo. So there's a lot of breweries in Buffalo. So. Oh, yeah, man. Great beer. I love the location. Great people and damn good food. Well, we have gone extra time. So we are at overtime as well. Uh, but uh, before we just we get... don't want to let it go, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Uh, I feel a little better talking about it. So I, I might do an overreaction pod at some point in this week. Um, just to, I was going to do an, like I said, before the show at eight o'clock and I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to it. I couldn't get anything down notes wise that I wanted to say um, just because there was, yeah, all in my feelings, but uh, we'll see if I can get it out at some point. And if I can, I'll put some notification out there, but do you have anything, any last words before next week's show? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't have anything else other than, um, you know, keep the faith and um, keep the interest and be nice to your mom. Yeah, be nice to your mom. <laughs> For those of you that are not being nice to your mom, John's yeah. being his words You're to you You're being admonished right now. <laughs> be nice to your mom. Go Bills, by the way. Fair, fair, fair advice. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been tuned into the Off Tackle with John Fina show, brought to you by Q42 on the Buffalo Rumblings Multicast and Vidcast Network. I'm the host of the show, Joe Miller. Find me on Twitter, Joe Miller Wired. That over there is my guy, John Fina. You can find him on Twitter, at John Fina. Dude, it's been, this has been a great year. This has been a lot of fun, and I'm uh, sad to see it go, but uh, I'm excited. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't know what's happening to your camera. But goodbye, <laughs> he's dude. trying to close it, but uh, I appreciate it. it. No, dude, you got to give me a go, Bill, so you can't, you can't <laughs> go yet, but I'm excited for this football team and Josh Allen and what what's to come. As heartbreaking as this in, we'll get over it, or this is, we'll get over it, and we'll come back next year. But uh, for Joe Miller, for John Fina, love you guys, as always. Go Bills. Hey, uh, heartbreaker, but go Bills, baby. Go Bills. Go Bills.